Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number 61. 61. 61. There it is. I'm so proud of Sue for getting that in there. That's <laughs> so much easier than like, how many fingers do we got? Anyway. Yeah, I gave up on counting fingers. That's true. Well, we got lots of cool stuff to talk about on uh, Tech Talk tonight, and uh, you guys are asking for it, and so we give it to you every week. Uh, you've got some cool stuff in your tech update? I do. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the newest version of Twisted Wave, my favorite noise reduction software, uh, my favorite EQ plugin, um, and a new piece of equipment called the Revelator. Oh, cool. All right. All that and your questions. Write them down in the chat rooms now, and we'll get to them here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk right now. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO. B.S. Tech talk. Talk. Tech talk. Talk. Tech talk. Jeff is back. Talk. Talk. TikTok. <laughs> Glad to have him back. Can't wait to hear about all his his adventures in in uh, in movie land, doing some really cool stuff. So Dan, what's your mic of the week? We noticed Mi that you have a mic change. Oh, although Jeff this noticed. is Jeff this is, is very my perceptive. This is my Alfonso D credenza. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now this 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 was originally a, a, an old crappy MXL two thousand one which uh -huh. had the guts ripped out of it by yours truly. And uh, our friends at mikeparts.com have a retrofit kit for this. And I rebuilt it and soldered it together. It's got like a, a you know, a, a, a TLM 47 capsule in it. Okay. So it's a great sounding thing, but being able to just do, you know, get the instructions and solder these things together and put it together and then plug it in and go, Holy crap, it works. That's <laughs> How, how long, greatest. how long do you, I was a while ago. You did that. How, how long yeah, did it take but, to but, put it together? Oh, I, I did it in a day or two. Actually, yeah. it's probably less than a day. I, you know, mm -hmm. like I got nothing to do. So that's and, cool. Yeah. It's fun. And as you can hear, it sounds great. Is it trying but, to be something like, is it trying to sound like a certain mic or like a U87 or something? You like know, that? I, th I think the guys over at Mike parts realize that, yeah, you know, the, there's subtle little sound changes and stuff like that. But as I always say, every voice is different. So any d engineer out there that's going to say, well, that's a K47 or a TLM 47 or a TLM 103 or one yeah. of those, they're not going to be able to tell. So yeah. when they ask if I'm ever on video and they go, oh, it's an Alfonso D. Credenza. Or oh, Tellori right. Dicesco. That's uh, a joke exactly. for my dad. Oh, I don't know if he's watching, but if he does, he'll <laughs> like that one. He'll, he'll get that. Well, if you're if you're wondering what George and I are doing here, we're here to help you with your home voiceover studio. But I figure you probably know that because that's why you're tuned into us. 
Uh, but, you know, there's so much you have to know. But is there really? What you really need to know is who can help you get the sound that is best for voiceover. And it's different from music. Remember, all of the stuff that we use. It's different all from of podcasting, stuff, too. Yeah, and, and podcasting is come along. And the manufacturers are like, it's all made for making music. It's all designed for making music. And then in the last three years, you know, the corporation's like, well, we got to have podcast equipment. Did they think about voiceover? No, nope. mm, not really. So we're I, just, we're just adapting all this technology to our uses uh, for voiceover. Mm -hmm. So you need to know who knows how to use this stuff properly. Cause it's not so much the stuff it's how you use it and how you set it up. And then what it ultimately does it sound like. And that's what George and I do. We help you pick the right stuff, set up the right stuff, and then show you how to use it right, which is will save you a lot of trouble down the line. It will save you so. hours and hours of mind-numbing frustration. And wasted know, time in forums asking <laughs> committees no. to advise you on <laughs> what equipment to use. And Yeah, don't crowdsource oh. your home studio. But if you'd like to work with one of us, a professional that actually knows and understands what it takes to have a home voiceover studio and how to do it, work with one of us. If you want to work with George, where do they go? What, where, what can they do? You go to this weird web address. Get ready for this. GeorgeThe.Tech. That's right. GeorgeThe.Tech. My name is my address. Uh, you can head over there and look at the menus of options that we have available and recently added our webinars and the recordings of said webinars. So if you're looking at to see what's coming up or what we've already taught, you can go to georgethetech.com or georgethe.tech slash webinars and uh, check out. We've only gotten two in the, under the, under the, uh, in, in the queue so in, far, or at least in the completed can, in the say. can. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> uh, we did one on. Uh, Adobe Audition, and we did one on Twisted Wave. So, uh, but anyway, that's uh, what we're doing around these parts. But Dan, you're helping people with studios too. Where do they find you? Every single day over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. And, uh, you know, I, I like working with people who are trying to get it. It's amazing how much people don't know what they don't know. Uh, especially when it comes to home voiceover studios, it's, uh, it's not rocket science, but it helps to have a helping hand guide you through it. And that's one yeah. of the things I can do. And, uh, I can teach you how to do it properly. So, you know, it's the old thing about, you know, better to teach you know someone to fish than keep giving them a fish. And that's mm -hmm. pretty much what I do. I, I teach you how to do it properly up front so you can be a voice actor and all you have to do is hit record. It's, it's really the right thing. amount of information. That's right. right. It's I don't like know you can you. find the information and you can get the information avalanche, AKA the internet. Right. But you're getting the right information and the right amount. And that's really what we want to help you with. Exactly. Save you a lot of time. Right. And if you're already set up, if you got all your equipment and you want to find out what your studio sounds like to someone who actually knows what it's supposed to sound like, you can go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com, scroll down all the way to the bottom of the homepage, and there is my specimen collection cup, and follow the instructions there. Send me an MP3 of your audio raw, please. I don't want to hear all the processing you're doing because everybody who's doing lots of processing probably doesn't know how to use it. And uh, and as I like to say, if you don't know what something does, don't use it. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, go on over there and uh, for $25, I will give you a very, very thorough analysis of your audio. And if it's good, I'll say hey, it's good. If it's not, and you're like way off the bat, you know, I will, I will certainly, uh, we can certainly schedule some timing and uh, teach you how to use it right. So let's get into your tech update this week, George, uh, starting with something we were talking about last week. Somebody asked about Twisted Wave 26. It's got video editing capability like Adobe Audition does or Yeah, well it's it in in Thomas's the developer of Twisted Wave, in his in his very clever way of thinking, he keeps it simple. Um, which I love. You which know, which is why it, we love him. Yeah. yeah. If you've used any video editing application, they have a common thread of that of being maybe a little 
arcane sometimes, maybe a little confusing, maybe much more complicated than necessary. But what if you just need to record a, a, just a quick promo of something for a vlog, or you just want to edit a quick vlog, or you want to take some something you recorded for your website with video, and you just want to cut it down, tighten it up. Um, it can do that now. You can drag a video into Twisted Wave, and before it would just strip the audio and you'd have no picture, but now it'll pop a video window up and it'll follow. The video will stay in sync with the audio. It's not a big deal. But what's interesting is if you do any cuts in the audio, video, sorry, the audio, if you edit the audio um, and take out flubs, dead space, gaps, whatever, the video follows right along. So it just does jump cuts wherever you edit the audio. So again, it's a, it's a niche thing but I think if you do a lot of vlogging and you want to put up videos on uh, Instagram or possibly even like um, TikTok where you want to just have a lot of speech in a short amount of time and have you know your video follow, it can do that. Yeah. Um, I've played around with the beta, did exactly what he said it did. It was really, it was just, I like the elegance of it. And yeah. um, you know, Dan and I use something called uh, ScreenFlow. And we like that it works the way we are used to with audio. Like when you can cut and edit, it feels like an audio editor, right? Like yeah. an audio multi-track. Yeah. This is like video, a video tape deck where you just cut out the yeah. stuff. You know, it's just super elegant. Anyway, that's now in 26. It's in a demo mode for 30 days. And if you do want it, he is now actually offering upgrades. So you can oh. upgrade and add the, the video editing feature yeah. for yeah, something $40, something like that. Yeah, but you can edit the audio, but not have necessarily edit the video. Yeah, the, it, the video can just be in a window over here, right? And so right. every time you hit you play, it looks just like old plain old Twisted Wave. That's what's interesting. Cool. It, it, there's almost no change to the interface. Everything's the same. You edit the same way, except there's this video window floating over here, and it's just following along. So yeah. when you can't cut out a flub or you remove a breath, whatever, and you shorten the video in some way or the audio in some way, the video shortens too. It's just, it's so, it's so simple. It's, it's just clever. So it's something interesting to experiment with. If you find yourself doing that a lot. Yeah. Can't wait to try it. I mean, I, if I've done, you know, it's not, I wouldn't necessarily call it dubbing work, but it's, you know, something, a, a foreign company will say, Hey, can you, you know, here's, here's the script. Can you do this in English? You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to match. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's like it, it helps you it helps you sync that kind of well, stuff. Well, yeah, up. the fact that you even if you're not intending to edit, it's if you want to work to a video where you need to be in sync, this this can work for you. But the audio has to come in with the video. Right. Then they also add speech recognition, another add on. So good for him. You know, he hasn't charged anything <laughs> to upgrade Twisted Wave and a very, very long time. So these are new add-ons that cost a little extra. The speak, rec re speak recognition tool is designed to allow you to load in a script. And as you're reading, it highlights the script showing what you have read. So you could have a script right next to your, maybe on a second screen or a different half of the screen. And as you're going, it will highlight the words you're speaking. If you don't say the word or you say the wrong word, it doesn't get highlighted. So you can add a glance, no, right away if you missed a word. So um, another new thing that came out of his, you know, wanting to meet the needs of, I think probably more so, I'm guessing maybe e-learning and audiobook world, I would imagine, but that's something new as well. So something you can play with again for 30 days for free and see if it's useful for your use case. In the world of processing, I've been really, really loving this plugin called Bertom Denoiser. That's B-E-R-T-O-M. That's the name of the developer. And um, I like it for a few reasons. One, it's very free, or it's very inexpensive or free or expensive. You pay what you want. It's, you know, honorware, which I really like. So the licensing is very easy. You don't have to sign up for this account and subscribe and all this stuff. It's very, it's very, well, if you're used to a lot of the other plugins out there, it's very low friction to get it up and running and use it. Oh, good. Um, it's really, yeah, I like that. If you don't want to, if you don't have Isotope or you want an alternative to Isotope or Waves 
and you want to have something that's where you're, you're, the money's going directly to a guy like Twisted Wave, uh, the developer. Um, that's kind of nice. And yeah. it's, I like it because it's really transparent, meaning a lot of those other noise reductions, like an Audacity, where you select the noise profile, um, Adobe Audition, Isotope RX, um, they get a little funky sounding as you turn it up. So when you're trying to really get rid of noise, the sound gets washy and what's that underwater sound you get? You know, get yeah. you get weird artifacts. Yeah. This one doesn't do that kind of thing. It, it's very transparent sounding, even when you slide the slider up and do more and more. And it also lets you tune it a little bit. Okay, this is a little bit more heady than I think a lot of people may want. But if I'm setting up the processing for somebody else, that allows me to bias how much bass noise reduction I'm doing versus how much middle or treble bass uh, noise reduction, which is nice. So let's mm. say most people don't have a lot of noise maybe in the treble range. It's just sort of a soft white noise. You can kind of leave that in there. So it has a nice even room tone, right? You still have that sound of a little bit of natural hiss. But if they have a really bad rumbling air conditioning compressor noise, you can go in there and say, that's the frequency area I need to get rid of. And you can really tune that frequency band out. It just sounds amazing. So give it a shot. And they have a new version just came out, 2.0, which has a universal binary. So that means it runs natively on the new M1 Silicon Max. So that's Good nice. To hear. Yeah. Moving on quickly, the TDR Nova plugin is another one that I've known of or heard of, but started making use of because... I've always found that the EQ settings in Audacity to be horrendously hard to use. Um, yeah. The tools are not great to begin with, but you can't tune and preview at the same time. So I, my, I call that like painting with a blindfold. <laughs> you kind of like, <laughs> you get the color you want, okay, and you look at the canvas, and then you put the blindfold on and you go over and see if you got the line in the right spot. That's how it is traditionally setting up, you know, some EQ in Audacity. You have to test it, play it back. Did it sound right? It's terrible. Now, but with TDR Nova, which is a really great EQ that also has dynamics, and you can use it for DSing, um, I got over the little learning curve quickly and I found it to be a huge advantage. And so now anytime anybody has me make a macro in Audacity, it's a requirement to get TDR Nova. And guess what? I don't know why but it's free. <laughs> so it's another great free tool. You like how the price make, of free, right? How do they make money doing that? I, I don't know. I, they, I think they do have like a deluxe version yeah. that has more features that they charge for. They're hoping that, you know, someone will say, I want more, more bands of something or whatever, but uh, yeah, it's, it's totally free. Um, for those using an iLock, you remember these things? I got an iLock. I got an iLock hiding in here somewhere. Yeah. Here's, here's an iLock 3. This is the most modern one. It looks like a tiny little flash card, right? And I, I got the old one here. Yep, there's the, there's the OG one right there. Um, now they have a USB-C version. So if you're tired of having a hub around just or a, a USB dongle thingamabob just to plug this into your MacBook, <laughs> they have a USB-C version that just came out. Um, the next thing and the last thing is Presonus. Now, I have a love... I'm not, it's not hard to say hate, but Personas for me has kind of been hit or miss in terms of products like quality and longevity. I've had certain products of them fail on more than one occasion for my clients. And at the same time, they make these incredibly good audio monitors, the Iris series that everybody I know that has them loves. And uh, I've recommended to a lot of people. So I'll say all that to say when they come out with a new product, I, I, I'm cautiously optimistic but they have this new interface called the Revelator IO24. And it's a $200 stereo audio interface, nothing too revolutionary. Not $800. Not $800, <laughs> $200. So it's right in that sweet spot between like the Scarlett 2i2 and the, like the SSL2, which are right. two that I recommend all the time. And what makes it unique is that it now has the processing that they would include in their big mixing consoles and, a, and something that's very similar from Studio One, it's called the Fat Channel. So basically you can now insert into your signal some processing. And this is very controversial, right? Should you be doing any processing? 
if you do nothing else, at the very least, it has an, an adjustable high pass filter. And for me, I think that could be alone one of those tools that's so helpful for so many people who go out and for some reason buy a TLM 103 and try to use it in their closet in their apartment. <laughs> and it picks up. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like that. <laughs> and it just pick up so much rumble and background. And so you can fine tune that out and it happens at the preamp. So it's already been removed. Yeah. And you can go way down the rabbit, the rat hole here. This, thing, <laughs> you know, your compression EQ, the EQ for me could be really nice. You know, if you know that this mic is sibilant with your voice, it's a little bright, you can tune that out and it's set $200. I'm again, cautiously optimistic i'm not going to go out and say go p replace what you have now with this but give it a try um if you want something a little more flexible it's actually if you remember the yamaha ago3 used one for a while right dan and that one sitting here somewhere i know yeah. it's in there somewhere. they're starting to pile up in the closet <laughs> me too i got a box over here <laughs> um it's like that just a little more power a little more feature rich so it's got the eq the compression, but it also has an expander gate, you know, so it's got some more interesting tricks up its sleeve. I think it's really, they, they, they clearly did this for the podcasting community. You know, it has yeah. all these loopback features and you can play back and do, you know, it's, it's got really every bell and whistle you could possibly want. And it could be for voiceover an Apollo killer at a third the cost or, you know, that, that alone will, will kill it. I mean, right. And it's Windows and Mac, it's USB. So yeah. I'd like to get one and put it through its paces and see if it really stands up to the potential. I'm not even going to say the hype. I just, I saw a good video about it and I was impressed. So I just thought I would, I would mention that. We just rarely mention Personas interfaces and uh, I'm hopeful. Yeah. Well, anyway, last yeah. thing my dad is selling his pinball machine. So if you're <laughs> interested in a vintage 1966 Williams. Super or eight ball uh, pinball machine. It's on eBay. <laughs> if you want the link, let me know. Um, I played that game, and everybody that came to the house played that game. And I, I, I think they got it when I was four or five. So hard to see it go if I had room for it. I can only imagine if my girlfriend came back from Iran and there was a pinball machine in the living room. <laughs> I mean, it is huge. Yeah. Not going to be cheap to ship across the country. That's no. Sure. But uh, anyway, I just it's just something uh, something I, that it hits, ho hits home. But hey, Dad, you do what you got to do and, slut and get rid of things you don't need anymore. I'm proud of you for, for getting rid of things you don't want. So... Right. Dan, it's a discussion that came up, which is perfectly timed, which is what causes rumble? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, I, I work with, you know, a lot of people like George does, and they send me their audio. And, you know, and I generally will go into Adobe Audition and just look at the spectrograph because that within a, a couple of seconds and just looking at it, I can tell what's going on in, in the space that they're recording it. Most of the time, there's a low frequency rumble. And so we generally recommend people use what's called a high pass filter. And what's a high pass filter? It's basically an EQ setting. And it's dependent on, you know, what is the range of the person's voice? Women's voices very rarely go below 100 hertz. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know a few women that were, that probably does happen. Maybe but, Nina Simone or something. You know? Yeah, exactly. And, and, uh, you, you've got to be able to get rid of that rumble without affecting your voice. And a lot of people are like, well, just use the noise reduction stuff that we were just talking about. It's much easier and much cleaner to use a high pass filter mm -hmm. uh, to clean that up, especially for women, uh, you know, yeah. try and take everything out below a hundred Hertz. Uh, I know yeah. some engineers will say, well, there's still some residual voice in there. I'm like, no one's going to notice, Not but mix. that will, yeah. yeah, I mean, that can take a noise floor from minus 48 to under minus 60 like that. Boom, like but that. what causes those rumbles? I mean, we have found all sorts of weird stuff that causes it. Uh, sometimes it's road noise, you know, and I always, and one of the things I do is I ask a lot of questions. Do you live near a major highway? Mm -hmm. um, well, I do, you know, and, and I have a picture window. 
that faces this major highway. It acts like a little diaphragm that'll vibrate the entire house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A, a lot of times it is air conditioning. You know, usually it's, and, and it's not the sound of the motor so much as it is the rush of air through ducts and stuff like that. And, and that sometimes creates, it's not your air conditioning either. It's your neighbors. <laughs> That's the problem. It's the neighbor, the, yeah. the condo upstairs. Right. Yeah. My favorite though, and no one ever thinks about this is the refrigerator. Hmm. You know, and, and cause I've, I've heard this so many times because you can look at a spectrogram and you can tell a number of things. One that it's mechanical, mm -hmm. uh, that it, you know, it might even be a ceiling fan, you know, thum, 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 thum. you can, you can actually hear those sorts of things. And, but more importantly, you can see them, which is why it's important to talk to an expert like George and I about this kind of stuff. So we can see where those noises are. My philosophy is. Yeah, it's great that we've got all these filters and they're getting better and better and better. But if you can get rid of the noise physically, that goes a long way to making the rest of your life a lot easier by not having yeah. the, all those denoising mm -hmm. programs. They're cool to have. They work. As you said, we're, they're getting better, but never rely on those. Uh, better to find the source and turn it off. So fridges, well, ceiling fans, air conditioning. You, you know. can really get in trouble relying on them if you get a source connect session. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they're like, okay. And they open up the mic and they're like, okay, I hear this. I hear this. And they're like, well, I, I, I don't have the stack that George made for me. I can't. Yeah. No, yeah. you, you can't rely on those processing tools for those kinds of real time sessions generally. So, yeah. especially if you don't know how to use them. You know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty important. But a, but a high pass filter is super duper easy. Just put up a 30 band equalizer or something like that. Take down everything below 80 Hertz and then, you know, and then try a hundred Hertz yeah. and see if that affects your voice at all. And okay, take the hundred Hertz one up and down. Right. And find the point where your voice starts to get a little thin. Right. And then and, back and most of, Yeah. And with most women's voices, that's not even, it's, you don't even know it. And yeah. it completely eliminates that stuff. Now you've got other noises in there. When you've got multiple noises in the background, you've got to figure out what those are. And they're generally, you know, we know to look at what frequency these things are at, because that's a real good clue as to what's causing it. Uh, yeah. Another one's 120 Hertz. Right. Which is usually electric, the same, it's a electrical current of some yeah, sort. Electrical humming, like from transformers and motors, it, HVAC systems sometimes can make that sound with the motor. And um, that's not a high pass filter thing. That's a, a specific frequency <laughs> well, yeah. you want to turn it off but you can remove that specific frequency but obviously if you've got a thing like isotope rx the tendency is to do what i call like a scorched earth approach which is just <laughs> hit adaptive voice noise reduction mode and just hope for the best and yeah. you know that's what it was designed for people that are no not technical maybe your voice maybe they're more video oriented and they've got to get something that sounds decent and it will get you sounding decent enough but not great yeah yeah so yeah. anyway i thought i'd throw that in there i thought that yeah definitely a we haven't good, talked about good that. subject no we really haven't okay we got lots of questions and we love questions from lots of people mm. so stay tuned we'll answer your questions right after these incredibly important messages so don't go away hi this is bill farmer and you are watching voice over body shop it's great From VoiceOverEssentials.com, it's the relationship savior, the multicolor LED VO recording sign. Not just a stock on the air or recording sign, it's our exclusive voiceover recording sign. This brilliantly lit LED 20 color beacon tells everybody at home, which is currently everybody, hey, I'm auditioning, recording, podcasting, narrating, or broadcasting here, and a few moments of relative quiet would be very much appreciated. What's more, the wafer-thin remote control lets you choose a multitude of options, from color to brightness, flashing to fade in and out. You can even set up your own personal codes. Red means I'm recording. Blue, playing back. Green, it's a wrap. Plug in the 7-foot-long cord and hang it on a doorknob or wall hook using the included chain. For voice workers, silence really is golden. And gold is one of the 20 colors you can choose from. 
Order yours now for just $69.95 from voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, Okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Well, it's that time of the show where we thank Source Elements for sponsoring our show. Thank you, Source Elements. Who the heck are they anyway? Well, Source Elements are the creators of a tool called Source Connect. And Source Connect allows you to be in your studio at home and be connected to studios anywhere in the world over the internet and allows them to hear your studio, your voice and your microphone exactly as it exists. This is uh, what engineers want. They want a clean, clear, unprocessed sound from you and your studio and they want to record it in theirs and they want the client that's listening in sometimes to hear it as well. And this, it facilitates this like really seamless workflow for them. The audio is already in the timeline of their Pro Tools system. Um, They can immediately adjust the timing, move it around if they need to, comp together one or two takes, meaning, you know, choose the ones they like, and then let the client approve it all on the fly. And this is what things like Source Connect allow you to do. It's just Source Connect is the one that's been at it for a really long time, over 10 years. And it's very much become a, a go-to tool for production. It tends to be the jobs that pay better. Um, it tends to be the higher budget productions that use it because there is a studio being hired to record you. So uh, it's if you are wanting to get those jobs, you need to have the right tools. So head over to source-elements.com and sign up for a 15-day free trial and get up and running so you can be ready when those jobs do come. You'll be able to say, I am ready with Source Connect. Anyway, thanks, Source Elements. We'll be right back to answer tons of questions. Bring them in. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. And we're back to answer your questions. All righty. Uh, Can I say something real quick about the Anthony Bourdain thing that was mentioned on the other show, other episode last week? Yeah, there. This is a, this is the thing. If you go into Google, type in Anthony Bourdain, uh, faked voice or dubbed voice, et cetera, et cetera. There's a bunch of stories about this, and yeah, it turns out they did. <laughs> the director of this film, this documentary about Anthony hired a, a software synthesized voice, like an AI voice company to synthesize his voice to use in the documentary. So this is sort of like, it's not breaking the fourth wall, but it's sort of like one of those, like, uh, I don't know if you'd call it like a, it's, they, there's a barrier that's been broken. Maybe ethic, ethically, tastefully, mm-hmm. I don't know what it is, but this is happening. So <laughs> it's, it's for real. Anyway, I don't know what to say about it, but well, it's watch it's it happening. and see if it sounds good. You know, yeah, people are saying it doesn't eerie. sound good. It's not. The word is eerie. Eerie. Okay. Yeah, that's the word people are using. I don't know if that means it's really, really good, so it seems real, yeah. or it's like that uncanny valley thing where it's oh, almost absolutely. right but not right. So yeah, you know, I was sitting in 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 a JFK airport a couple of weeks ago before we went to Iceland, and I was listening to some announcements over the PA, and one voice was. Clearly like, you know, welcome to this, you know, but, mm-hmm. and then something, another voice came on and it just sounded very, not quite right. And I was sitting next to this guy I said, did you hear those announcements? Go, yeah. Yeah. 
did, did one not sound quite right to you? Yeah. The second one, it was like, you know, and then of course we get into, Oh, I do voiceover and you know, that sort of thing. And, but that's an AI voice and I don't fear AI. I really don't. So don't fear AI. It'll put out the people, you know, uh, the, it, if the people that want to be cheap and use AI for their productions, fine. You don't want to work for people who are cheap anyway. So anyway, let's get to some of these questions that we got tonight. Uh, this one from Patricia Andrea. Would you talk about security as a network or if needed when it comes to hackers and protecting the work that's done? You know, keep your, keep your, your software up to date. Keep your, uh, you know, your, your spam software and your uh, malware software and, you know, don't leave your computer on at night. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's a good question. That might be a guest we can seek out at some point. Cause I'm yeah, not really. an IT security maven by any stretch of the imagination. I would imagine I allow more to be accessible out there maybe than should, should be possibly, but, um, anybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Luke Truen has that, that, that newsletter, uh, perhaps we should get him back on and talk about that. I think you're right. I, we, it would be great to have someone that really understands this stuff. It can be a little, a little intimidating. It can be a little scary. If you really want a resource to listen to, <laughs> they really talk about this stuff, check out a show called security now on the, this week in tech, the twit network. Um, eh, it's a little bit, it's a little scary. <laughs> mm. Yeah, they're 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 everywhere. They're they're hunting, you know. And apparently, it's like shooting fish in a barrel in this country with the way they're uh, these, these hackers are getting in there. Anyway, now what's this question about a fusion drive? Can you catch that one? Oh yeah, this one this Michael one's Matthews. a bit involved. So I'm gonna try we'll to like try to no. edit it down a little bit. Yeah. So um, so uh, Michael writes in and says, you know, as the fusion drive on my old 2013 iMac is making frightening sounds a fusion drive is apple was like making these hybrid spinning hard drive with an ssd with an ssd so it's like it's one of these with a memory card jammed inside it. <laughs> that's physically what the what the uh, those drives were i never liked them but anyway the case in his case he's thinking i might need to get a new mac soon so he was looking at the m1 max and then of course did a little googling um, he thought, oh, maybe I can use my 27-inch iMac as a monitor after the drive crashes, which you actually you can. You can use it on iMac as a monitor. Um, and then I ran into this, because we all do our research, <laughs> and he found this article that talks about how uh, when the solid-state drive, the storage part of your, the memory, not the memory, but the storage area on a uh, MacBook Air or Mac Mini or whatever, when that fails, the computer can't be booted anymore. It's basically dead. It's broken. And maybe that's obvious to some. Probably a lot of people assume that's normal. <laughs> like when, when it dies, the computer's junk. That's how phones are, right? When that, if the phone's memory storage thing dies, you're probably going to get a new phone. Well, that's, that's also true, it turns out, for the MacBook M1 system. So... Um, I won't get into a crazy amount of detail, but you can go to, um, there's an article on a website called tidbits, T-I-D-B-I-T-S.com. Look for um, M1 Mac can't boot from an external drive. Uh, you'll find this article. But it is true, um, if the storage internally on a Mac, Mac M1 fails, if that literally is what has failed, you can't boot from another drive. We're, we're used to being able to do this. You can plug a, an external flash drive or USB drive or anything that has a system on it, and you can boot your Mac off of that. Now, for the vast majority of you out there, this doesn't really matter, okay? Because one, you're backing up. You're backing up, right? You're backing up, right? Oh, I'm always um, backing up. <laughs> you're always backing up. And two, it's going to happen so rarely and randomly that... Either the computer is going to be under warranty still, or it's going to be quite a few years old, and you'll probably be ready to upgrade. So I know this has people a little upset, and I, I kind of get it. I mean, 
here's the here's the deal. I found a little art. I found a little story about this. I'll read this little bit of information, and maybe this will put some perspective into what this is really all about. This is from the Tidbits article. Um, a large majority of people don't even possess bootable external drives. This is people just don't even do this, um, and so they wouldn't even care that this feature doesn't even exist. It's so unusual for normal users to do it. Modern solid states are very reliable. The vast majority of people with Apple Silicon Max will never experience a failure of their internal SSD storage. Um, and they, so they'll never encounter a situation where they can't boot from an external drive. Um, so iPhones and iPads, when's the last time your iPhone wouldn't boot? Right? Never. It's pretty rare. I mean, Apple's pretty darn good at sourcing good components that don't fail. Um, and this is, this is still the case with the M1. Um, should the internal boot volume become corrupted or the firmware in the secure enclave develop issues, Apple has recovery options. So if it's not an actual failure of the chip, like something burns out, um, it's just corrupted, there are ways to repair it and recover it, get it running again. So yes, it is a little concerning that yes, you can't boot from an external drive, but it's, I don't think it's a good reason to not get one. It's just progress. Um, it's the fact that the solid state is all, it's all combined into one chip inside there, and which is why it's so stankin' fast <laughs> and really efficient and really, really, really quiet. Um, this is the cost of progress, I have to admit. And so yeah. while I don't like the idea of that, it's just that's the way it goes, and I don't think it's going to happen that often. So I wouldn't keep it from, I wouldn't keep from buying one for that reason. Yeah. I, the thing is, is how often do these things actually burn out? I mean, I've seen logic boards go and stuff like that. You know, my old, my old Mac, the logic board went on it, you know, as I was trying to sell it, of course, uh, that wasn't cheap, but you know, it, it, they, they do fail, but are there lots of examples of SSDs failing and, and burning out? These things burn out, <laughs> <laughs> right? But, you know, solid state stuff doesn't really burn out that much. These things fail and crash. Did you stop buying computers because hard drives crash? No. no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit of tech, tech fright or tech fear, tech phobia kind of stuff. I really feel um, it's not, uh, not something to be worried about. Yeah. Jeff Holman has an interesting question for you. He says, I see that you have the Shure A15 high pass filter on your website gear recommendations, George. Can it be set up to have different attenuation slopes like the <laughs> TDR Nova 12 dB? Well, okay, he's, no. He's rambling on. It there. can't, Jeff. It's <laughs> an extremely simple analog filter device that um, either will help your situation or it won't. So it's kind of a band aid fixed. I guess if you wanted to try it with your. TLM-103 um, as a way to, to filter out the rumble. The whole idea is to remove rumble. Um, it's something that you could try. I would. It's definitely a try, try, test, return. Buy, test, and return <laughs> if it doesn't work for you. Um, but no, it's, it's a very simple, simple How device. How expensive is one of those things? Uh, I don't remember. $50? Something like that. It's, it's like a, it looks like a really chunky USB or chunky XLR. It's like a like if you took a male and a female, just attached them to each other, and that's that's what it so looks something like. Something like that. Kind of like that, a little bit bigger, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah, same idea. Okay. So, yeah, I, it's funny. I forget to mention them all the time, but um, it's worth a shot, and it certainly makes it simpler to deal with. You don't have to do post-processing and muck around with it right. later. You know, and a lot of good microphones have have a bass roll off on them too. So it's I love that. the same thing. I wish that the Neumanns had that. It's such yeah. an important thing. But those mics were designed for you know studio environments where the engineer has total control of absolutely every aspect of the signal. They never you know it just was designed for different reasons. And also, when you add switches to a microphone, like this classic Audio Technica has little switches Bing. for a high pass. When you add switches, there's failure. Those are points of failure. There are places yeah. where noise can happen, switches can go bad. And, you know, that's another reason why they, I think they avoided switches on those mics. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting question from Vox Virtues. Cool. 
Yeah. How soon do you think it'll be cheaper for engineers to fine tune synthetic voice versus directing and editing live talent? Now, this is probably in reference to what we were talking about last week with uh, Harry Berkeley about, uh, uh, you know, dubbing and stuff like that, but also cheaper for engineers to fine tune synthetic voice. They are still a long way off. I mean, how do you fine tune a synthetic voice? It still has to have, it's still people breathe people sigh they you know there's there's just a little the bit subtleties of subtleties are endless yeah if you can program that in you're you're using a bubble drive i mean to, to take all of the you know remember those from like the 60s bubble drive that's going to be the thing that you know that's going to be the beast and that's how they're going to store things um it's going to take a tremendous amount of information and processing to do that power yeah yeah i i don't see it happening i mean they can try and like i said the cheapos can they can use their ai and they can create synthetic voices but i can tell a synthetic voice a mile away i, I mean when they when they make it accessible to synthesize you know a human on camera and there are you know there are now they are getting very good at that right they are recreating celebrities that are that are passed on yeah or they're de-aging them um that when that becomes them. accessible <laughs> yeah we're yeah. aging them um when that becomes accessible to like low budget productions you know then it will start to become more mainstream but right now these technologies are going to be either done poorly and cheaply or done extremely well and be very very expensive uh we're a, we're quite a way away from that i think but just you know stay tuned cuz there's new news all the time yeah well we'll find out but, uh, you know, it's an, it's an interesting topic, you know, that we've been, we've been tossing around over at world voices, the industry association, mm. now, how do we address this? Right. It's like it's out there, you know, if people want to use it and I'm sure if you're on Facebook, you see they're you know, they're, they're pressing, you know, they're pushing it on Facebook saying, oh, you can get a, use a voice that's, you know, do it by, you know, it'll make it sound real. It's nonsense. And the fact that it's on Facebook, because I'm constantly telling my wife, stop buying stuff on Facebook because <laughs> it's usually <laughs> garbage. I mean, I have I, I have a client who's got many years in broadcast and voiceover, and he is he has done he is selling his voice. He there's a European company that is buying his voice, and he, he is wants. training training their software on his voice. They yeah. shipped him a computer. He's running their proprietary software. He reads back thousands of somewhat nonsensical phrases and sentences, and it learns his voice. So this is happening. Yeah, it's happening. Will it, will it pick up the subtleties of his voice? I I, mean, he every, he knows every, that his uh, cash, the the cash was good enough. Yeah, he was like, it's okay. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> so for him to retire on and pay for his, it, his daughter's it, college, it, if that know. was true. I think everybody doing it. I don't think it's that good, but you know, <laughs> really sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Well, here's, here's time for a little ad for you and, and Mr. Wasserman, uh, from Grace oh. Newton. What are the advantages of the tri booth over a PVC grommeted blanket booth? Oh, let me uh, channel my inner Rick Wasserman. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, from a, from a purely basic functional level not much like if you were to it, it's if we are using a good quality sound blanket that we found worked really well we configure it for you so that it's easy to set up um, but from a pure functional like sound quality perspective you can make something that will sound very very similar to a tri booth yourself right so you can diy um there are like various levels of diy meaning like Go to the hardware store, buy the PVC. Dan, Dan's got a classic video from Ewab's days. If you type in, if you type into into YouTube, you can find it of him putting together one of these booths. But what the tri booth did was we we made we got rid of the DIY part. Uh, it's completely a hundred percent as simple and easy to assemble as quickly and quickly as possible. It's also extremely portable. It's the most portable of anything of this nature you know that you can assemble and stand inside of the whole thing packed down is less than 50 pounds 
40 to 45 pounds, depending on what accessories are in there. So um, it may sound like a lot, but when you, if you check out anything else similar, uh, they tend to be a, a good deal heavier and just too bulky to think about even checking as a bag. So that, those are the main things. The Tri-Booth is better packaged, much, much easier to assemble and take around with you. Has a resale value because uh, <laughs> it's a commercial product. Mm-hmm. It's backed by Rick and me. Uh, so, you know, it's going to, he's going to make sure you're happy with it for the long term. Yeah. I can tell you that. Yeah. And, it's, uh, it's, it's designed to be a travel booth. I mean, that's, that's the, that idea. was the initial, yeah, that was clearly our intention. Then when COVID came, it became a home booth <laughs> and, <laughs> and people started buying them for their home setups. And then hopefully they'll want to one day start taking them with, taking them with them and they'll be able to. So that's, uh. That's really the difference, you know, and, and it, it ha- just it has everything. We obsessed over what you th- we think you would want or need, and uh, that's that's really what the main that's the difference, you know. And with that comes a price, because it is hand built and hand assembled and everything by Rick and his wife in Culver City, California. So it's a very much a boutique, you know, uh, artist artisanally made product, but we. We're proud of it. It doesn't sound good. Oh, and and Jeff, you know what, Jeff, you're a good man. It also comes with an audio processing preset by yours truly. How could I forget? So when you get a booth, you're also getting, you can either uh, have me make a setting for you, or we can just do a 30-minute consult, and I'll just make sure you're getting everything out of the booth that you can possibly get. You're setting it up right, you're using proper mic technique, and your sound quality is where it needs to be. So you have your choice when you buy a tri-booth. Yeah. Thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. Jeff, but you're you, a good man. Yeah. You got to put it in a quiet room. It's I mean, got to be quiet. That, that's, I mean, that's the one thing I find yeah. about, you know, cause I, I build the, you know, the PBC booths and I recommend people, mm-hmm. you know, have a, have a tri booth or something along those lines. If you have a really quiet room, like say an outbuilding in back, like your own she shed or something <laughs> like, like we that. all do in LA. <laughs> yeah. Which many people do. Uh, those are great places to use those. Uh, because if, because there's no blankets going to keep sound out, but no. they certainly, they, they create the perfect acoustical environment for, for reflection and stuff. It like reduces that. like a white noise. Like if you had a little bit of a noisy computer fan or something right. and it's sitting outside, it, it, it knocks it down a good, a good amount, but that's about it. Can't right. have a dog or a cat in the room. You can't have your kids around, <laughs> you know, you're going to hear it. Uh, yeah. The cat's going to scratch on it anyway. So, uh, <laughs> Okay, more acoustical stuff. You get to read this one from Jim McNicholas. All right. Uh, Jim says, I'm thinking about building two walls in a corner of my basement. So just creating a closet, essentially. Yeah. Um, floor to ceiling and enclose it. Uh, it says, floor to ceiling, comma, and enclose it, comma, before treating the box, question mark. I'm not sure about what that means. But then it says, Owens Corning 703. In the wall. Oh, it's just sort of, he's speaking extemporaneously yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, he's basically saying, how do I design this thing, guys? Quick. <laughs> well, <laughs> glad you okay. asked. Well, I'll, I'll, here's the, here are the two big, well, the main gotcha of a basement studio is you better pray that nobody's home uh, yeah. when you're recording. You will hear them <laughs> doing everything up. Exactly. Yeah, Honey. the refrigerator above can you. There. Can you go outside? Can you, you know, go? You'll hear every footstep up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll hear you'll hear everything going on in that house in the basement. Um, so don't forget that you're going to have to deal with that, and to deal with that properly is complicated. And I have a design for that um, that I've put together with the help of another consultant, and it's quite. That's the that's the hard part. It's not hard to get the noise from traveling through the walls coming from, you know, equipment or the HVAC system or the heater. That's not so hard. It's, it's the, it's the ceiling isolation. Yeah. So I'm const- constantly yeah. reminded of my, one of my roommates in college who, where we had no carpets on the floor and he loved wearing Bastad clogs, you know, clunk, 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 clunk. yeah. Yeah. The, the ceiling is, 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 is really prime. Let's put it this way. I had a client who had a three car garage in Colorado took the last bit. So the car garage, three car garage was off the side of the house, but it was attached to the house. 
Mm. So it's like house, three car garage, and they're adjoined. So you can walk right into the house. It's Colorado. You don't want to go right. outside. Right. The, the last bay, farthest end of the house, he has a triple wall studio brick booth. One of the best you can buy, okay? And then that's inside a fully enclosed room. That's all drywalled off, right? So far from the house as possible, in a separate room, in a tri booth, okay? He can hear his boys playing, running around upstairs in the house at the other end of the house because it's transmitted through the whole <laughs> ceiling structure because it's all one unit. It's all connected, right? Right. And he can still hear that. <laughs> it's like a guitar. <laughs> yes. I use that analogy all the time. It's like pluck a string, the sound goes down the string through the tiny little bridge and then radiates into the... Yeah, it's, yeah that's, that's the gotcha of the basement. If you if you live alone or you're you know it's your 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 family is you're just you and your wife and she's in the other part of the room knitting or whatever it is you're gonna be fine just keep that in mind unless she's using really big needles um, anyway well it's amazing how fast the time goes when you and I just talk shop and mm -hmm. I know it's, it's past seven o'clock we gotta go we got we gotta go we gotta go. Anyway, uh, it's you know, it's great getting your questions. You can ask us questions anytime. Write to us at the guys at vobs dot tv. There it is. Uh, if you got a question, write it in there. You know, George and I are checking an email and like, okay, that's a good question, and we throw it in because there was a question this week about about network security and stuff like that, which is yeah. important to talk. And if you about. want to join us live in the clubhouse room, as some folks did tonight, that's another place you can ask questions and we'll ask to them, answer them live, like radio show style. Yeah. We want to hear your voice, your voice actors. Why would you be afraid of us hearing your voice <laughs> anyway? All right. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back to wrap things up right after this. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco and you're watching voiceover body shop. Getting into VO is quite an accomplishment. And accomplishing anything in the world of performance can be really tough. Getting great information is tough. Getting the right advice and mentoring is tough. Simply getting ahead is tough. And the best way to get ahead is to simply get started. Let's make it simple. To get started in voiceover, the best way is with VO Hero's free online course, Getting started in voiceover. You'll learn everything you need to know to create a successful, satisfying, and profitable voiceover career. The link is really simple. Here it is. VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Again, that's VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Get ahead in voiceover simply by getting started. Go to VOHeroes.com forward slash start. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back to say goodbye. Um, I had to rest my ears. These yeah. things are, this is the last time I'll wear them for two hours on the show. Yeah. Now, now next week, you're going to be out camping, I guess uh let's see two weeks from now yes that would be the 20th. 23rd i think yeah i will be on the road yeah so, so we might do we something might, we might, 
we might do something different. Who knows? We haven't we'll figured pre- it out yet. Pre-recorded something. <laughs> you know, there's always something we can talk about. Uh, but I know we have, um, uh, is it Pam Chapman, Sue Chapman, the, the um, Amy Chapman, Amy Chapman. Yes, yes, yes. Who is a, a speech pathologist or she is a, she is an expert on getting your voice working right. Yeah. She does like laryngeal massages. Ooh. I've heard are really, really good. Um, anyway, yeah, she'll be on in a couple of weeks. She's been September. on before. Um, yeah. if you want to f- see who she is, just type her, type her name into Amy YouTube V O B S. Um, but, yeah. uh, anyway, we're look, looking forward to having her on the show. Yeah. We've got lots of great people coming up, um, as we head into fall and maybe it'll cool off a little bit. Who are our donors this week? We have Robert Leadham, Yes Icon, Martha Khan Productions, Don Griffith, George A. Whittem, my dad, Brian Page, Rob Ryder, Patty Gibbons, Greg Thomas, Antland Productions, Shauna Pennington Baird, Thomas Pinto. Thomas Pinto, really? Still? Um. Thanks. <laughs> and Shelly Avellino. Uh, you know those names well because we read them almost every single episode. And that's because they subscribe. They, they've been donating a little bit of money automatically using our PayPal uh, yeah. link. And, and uh, you can too. You uh, can if you like. Helps. We'll just keep reading your name. Right, which is why we've kept the show on the air for 10 years, because we've been able to technologically move with the times. What we call those associate producers? Is that how that works? No, we call or them executive donors. producers. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, look, if you need help with your home studio, you can go to work with George at George dot tech and Dan over at home VO home voiceover studio.com. All righty. Our sponsors. We thank them immensely every week. Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials, voiceover, extra source elements, VO heroes.com voice actor websites.com and, and JMC and demos. demos. Thank you. Thanks to Jeff Holman for uh, holding down the fort in the chat yeah. rooms tonight. Danny Burnside over on Clubhouse. Sue Merlino, hope you're feeling better. And uh, But she still got it done. We can still do it remotely. But I can't mm. wait for everybody to get back in here. It's always much more fun when we're all together. For sure. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, and uh, so... Uh, <laughs> George is frozen. So I will well, at say least I'm not making a ridiculous face. Thank well, God for that. that. That's true. But at least we can hear him. I'm Dan Leonard. <laughs> and I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO. BS. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. See you next week, kids. Thanks for watching.